Welcome back, fellers. Welcome back to another uh, Epi on the old channel here. Uh, this week, got a little different topic to discuss while we're out and about today. What do you do when you not when you don't just get freaking paid? You do the job and you just don't get paid. They just won't pay you. What do you do? Well, introducing a very good lawyer. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You drop a lawsuit, you drop liens on the job, and yes, does it hurt? in the communication process and waiting on your time, waiting on your money, you know, the flow, the cash flow, yeah, it interrupts your flow and it, and it hurts your business and you've got to figure out how to get around it and how to safety net yourself to keep business going while this client or customer, whatever you want to call them at that point, hasn't paid their bill. And you were waiting on that money, you were counting on that money to pay bills and keep things going. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're at 2nd Street. We got some fire content coming from... No? Yeah. Wasn't my truck. Either way, we're here at 2nd Street. We have got to wrap this up. Oh my God. We are literally days away from having all the... Bruh. Mr. Burke, where we at, homie? The hall. Um, this week, we're coming at you guys. We're heading to 2nd Street. We're heading to Northwest Park. We got equipment tours coming at you guys. Be looking out for those videos. And I hope you guys absolutely love Family Day. If you haven't seen it, I will drop it right here so you guys can grab it. Just hit that card in the corner. It'll take you right to it. Stop what you're doing. Family Day was by far the, one of the coolest things I've ever done. Eight years in business and giving back to all the employees was so cool. Go check that out. Look straight down there in the description just below the video and just below that subscribe button and hit that but right there in your description there's our website if you guys want to go check us out on our website uh, there's a careers button there if you guys are local or you're in the area we are looking for a few utility guys at the moment with our current workload moving on in an annual year we'd love to have you here so if you guys like what we're doing here and you and you've done this before come to a company that's gonna treat you like family and actually appreciate who you are and what you do every day Come check out uh, Second Street Northwest Park and let's get this uh, let's get this thing going. Let's do it. <clears throat> so down here, a lot of guys probably wonder what we do. There's a manhole that we just set into, and this is our manhole that we just poured and we're taking off out of. Down in their pipe that they set in that manhole, there's a laser that literally sits inside the pipe in this manhole and shoots a laser straight, straight as an arrow right down our ditch. And essentially, it'll give them a, you can put in the percentage of slope. So right now I think we're running 0 0.5, 0 0.4, so that's about a half a percent, a 0.4 is minimum. You set your laser up here and you're actually casting a beam all the way down to there and you'll see them checking it with the shovel, checking it with the grade rod and stuff, but that's exactly how we lay sewer. We're checking grade and stuff with a normal grade rod to make sure we're digging out enough, but when we're laying that pipe, we're actually using what is called a target board and we stick a target board in the other end of this pipe and that pipe laser shoots and it tells us exactly where our grade is on that percentage carrying from our first manhole. That's how it's done till the next manhole take the laser out put the lid on this manhole take your laser and put it in the next manhole and start your next run come on yeah it was open from i want i time. want you guys to know nate do you hear me yes, sir. you don't ever have to get in an unsafe hole ever you need to come tell me when we're going to run one trench box over the lip of an asphalt as soon as that sucker's above that and that asphalt's above yeah, there, you're either benching or something, especially looking at that. And I get it, it wasn't good material through here. There's 15 existing lines, I get it. But just digging 100 foot and just, I just didn't. Yeah, you can't. I get you trying to get ahead. But yeah, no, it don't. There was a massive hole right here. And I mean a massive hole right here. Not too long ago, if you guys remember, this manhole right here, we were standing, me and Sarah were standing on that edge right over there talking about this manhole had had to come out and you guys saw it after it had came out. It's back in the ground. We've got this line ran down this road, that line coming down that road as you can see. We'll dead in and tie there and abandon the manholes and switch them over to the new server service. This has got a little bit of the water stuff still going on. We need to get that up. We need to dig that up and get that piece of CTS for testing out of the way. Other than that, 
all the water's done, tied in. Everybody's drinking off the new brand new water line, which is absolutely awesome from compared to what they were just drinking off of. So awesome. So I'm standing right here where we were working in the other day. Oh, if you guys haven't seen the video with me and my son, I'll put that right here. Click on the card, go check out the video. That was such a cool video to have Cole coming around with me all day. But this right here is exactly where you saw me do the cut and cap. And this is what finalized all the water out. And we have this entire road and that entire road now working off of the new system. The boys are hauling the mail as much as they can. They're so close to being out of here, getting to the end with the dead end manhole. Then we're gonna have a, uh, a smaller crew come in here and basically wrap up the services and switching over the services just like we did with the water once the main line is now serviced and approved, right? <laughs> Onward! So essentially, you can kind of see what we're doing. This road right here is absolutely terrible. And it's nothing the guys can do, it's just the variable. Yeah, you can stand right there if you need to. It's just honestly what we have been given and it's, it's the variables that are a part of this job that make it so interesting, I guess is the word. But you can see Nate working in the box, getting gravel ready for that next stick of pipe, and he's totally safe. There's nothing that can happen to him other than coming straight down over top of him, which would be a rather unique situation with the box protruding four foot out. You can see he's working within the box, completely safe. If any of this fluffs off, it hits that box. Any of that fluffs off, it hits that box. Boxes are kind of a pain to deal with, but guys, do not risk it. Do not ever risk your guys in any type of situation if they need a box, get them a box. Seriously, yes, it does hurt your bottom line. At the same time, at what cost are you gonna put somebody's family member, you know what I mean? Replace somebody's family member, right? So safety is such a big deal here. That's why you always see even Will has a hard hat on and a vest on. We don't play safety here. And that's exactly why. These sloughed off banks like this can be an absolute killer. If you got one yard of dirt, I don't even know what that equates to, but it'll kill you. I just wanted to show you guys that this pipe is now getting backfilled. We've got our bedding rock on it. We, we place that bedding rock below the pipe. We put our pipe, then we put our bedding rock over it. And that's that three quarter clean rock and it's got no fines in it. You can see this base rock right here has these fines in it, right? These actual fines that keep the rock together when it's got moisture in it. And that's what goes underneath asphalt and concrete a lot of times. That clean rock down there allows the water, if there's any water in the ditch, to move along freely through that rock and carry out the slope direction of either way. So he needs to get in here and get some rock on this and uh, we're gonna get out of here. People don't know no hats eye. I heard about that on the Q&A. Everybody's like, who is this no hat guy? So let me put my hat bag on, you know. Man, what do you, what do, you do when money is such a taboo subject, it feels like, trying to get work, right? Like, especially when I was first starting out, it was so taboo to talk about money pre-doing the contract. You know what I mean? You guys kind of agreed on an estimate price and never put anything in writing back then. I'd go do the job and then it'd be two, three weeks go by, haven't heard from them. Then it's four weeks. Oh, I'll get you some money. It's about half your money. And let me tell you something. It doesn't ever get any better than that for the rest of your business history, unless you do something majorly about it, it's going to run like that. So what I'm getting at, first things first, all you guys that are small, get it in writing. Get a small contract template offline, make them sign it. If they ain't willing to sign a contract, they ain't willing to pay you. That's how this works. They'll sign that contract if they got enough money in the bank to pay you. And why Why would it be any, any, I mean, you have to sign a contract for Netflix nowadays. I mean, seriously, I mean, everything you sign a contract for, but uh, we've got a job site currently that <clears throat> is withholding $107,000 that we have already completed. There's about a $40,000 overage change order that's already in the ground and that we're still arguing about. I have not received a single dime from this job. Material first arrived for this job was April, don't want to, April 12th, April 4th. So we're talking a good two and a half months ago. And there was, I think, 550, 580 loads in and out of that place. So it wasn't our trucks. We had 10, 12 trucks running to keep those numbers or to get those numbers, right? So I've spent $65,000, $75,000 already to get this job done. 
I've already paid all the labor. I've already paid all the machine payments. I've paid all the insurance. I mean, uh, you, you you incur the cost months most of the time before you even get there to get paid. And then you got to wait 30 to 45 days if you're lucky. If you can, especially in the residential world, guys, to better protect yourselves from the situations um, that are going to arise. It's not w- w- if, it's when when it's going to happen because it will happen to you and somebody will not pay you in the residential world and you're not going to be able to do a dang thing about it without anything in writing. Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. See, see how this is road this road closed up here oh I guess we can't I guess we can't what are we gonna do guys road closed to through traffic I think we're gonna go around that sign I'm pretty sure we're gonna go right around that sign this truck behind us isn't gonna have a clue either He's be, oh god we're taking you guys up here to Northwest Park <clears throat> I'm gonna show you we're actually doing something really cool here um, we got a change order on our contract they need basically the intersection ripped out um, The road that we're on right now, this major collector road, runs north and south through Rogers. You guys have seen it through the past couple videos, the vlog videos. You can go check one out here. We're basically going to show you some before of what they're going to do, and we should have it backfilled ready to go before the end of the week, and uh, that whole section is going to be getting paved anyways. But yeah, we've got some water over here. This project has really moved along. Look at this old cool bulldoggy snub-nosed Mac here. This is cool. Go back in time right there. Oh, Barrows, my guys. Shout out. I turned the blinker off. We're gonna fake them out. We're gonna take a left. No, we're, no, well, we're gonna go this way. Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. So, ah! People are thinking I'm crazy. I, it's, I'm, yeah. Our water's going right here. Okay, guys, this is where you gotta bear with me because I don't quite know every single thing that's going on here at all times. But I know for a fact that this storm drain, not that storm drain, there was conflict about us digging up this water line right here. As you guys can see, this is asbestos concrete, AC water line. Look at all the water ball, beach ball down in there. Number one, we've gotta, we gotta do something better with this safety fence for sure with all these kiddos around and out of summertime long story short we got some water to do here and we're waiting on some approvals throw that up there for now that's a little better can we catch it on anything there yep we can catch it on that this water line there was a conflict you can see there's a little fiber mark here and some gas but I think there's a storm drain either running north and south right here that's gonna conflict with our water. So that's why they've taken the saddle off of here. There was one off. You can see the nice clean spot on this where that saddle was. So they took this off, but you see right through here, we're bringing a hydrant and setting it, I think on the other side of this sidewalk. Sidewalk, yeah. We're going on the other side of that sidewalk and setting it right back in there for good fire suppression on this side of the road. And then uh, while during all this utility nightmare, you can see we are now standing in the middle of this major collector road that we just came through. And years ago when they built this road, I guess they decided that gravel wasn't a thing. Uh, Gravel's a thing now, guys, and we have to put gravel underneath our road to support the road or it turns to crap. Things like this, seeing mud like this underneath roads can't happen. Um, So all the asphalt's ripped out. What we're effectively going to do is everything here we're gonna take down, I think we've been asked to take it down 18 inches to get it right and cover the whole area. We're gonna build it back up with with select fill and then turn around and gravel the entire area and get it ready for asphalt. So this is an extra or a change order to the contract, right? They didn't ask us to do this from the start. This, sorry guys, I just ate and I got the burpees going on. Shout out to Taco Bell. We've gotta get, we've gotta get this dirt out of here, put some gravel back. This job has gone really, really, really well from the get go. And you guys saw the sewer line that they had to run through the middle of the road. That's actually back mm, probably a couple hundred yards up there. That went in two days. I mean, they, they hauled the mail out of that road. Um, and that manhole, I think Bobby just poured. So I think essentially everything, if you guys can see that stake right there, we're going to be bringing that sewer line from that manhole 
down here to this manhole. Oh, I'm sorry. The next two stakes up, those green stakes that are in line. There's a manhole going right there. And then we take off and we go east. I don't know if they have that run, but it's just past that backhoe somewhere in there we end up. About 80% of the sewer here, which with this was a very heavy sewer contract, uh, about 80% of it's done and completed. And it may be even more than what I'm thinking. This was a little adder. The water, we've got water coming across this road to effectively bring them in within uh, fire suppression. And then we've also got another water line getting saddled, tapped, and bringing out for another fire hydrant for fire suppression on that side. So we wanna show you guys this and the big hole that we're basically going to effectively take down, build right back up. And we should have this done by Friday. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. we have learned from our mistakes the hard way. We have um, have all the documentation needed to press forward in the matter that we're dealing with. But as a business owner, how do you keep things going when you're missing $100,000 worth of revenue? There's that side of it, right? Like, what do you do? You go to the bank? Well, I don't know if you guys haven't checked, but the banks are bleeding right now. And the banks don't want to do any business with anyone because they can barely keep hold of their fake money that they've got. So what do you do then? You just sit here? Go down with it? No, you don't just go down with it. You got to find a way around it. You don't tell these guys, no, we're not going to work because some, because some douche canoe didn't pay us. So long story short, you got to have three things, okay? This is a really good lesson. When you're in business, I have learned the hard way. You have to have a CPA, a good one. You have to have a good lawyer and you have to have a good banker. And me and Sarah being 31, trying to carry all this is a lot. And um, yeah, those three things are crucial to your relationship. It's not about what they can do for you or what you can do for them. Just nurture those relationships with those people. Even if that CPA doesn't get your jokes, even if your lawyer's a pain in the butt to deal with, it don't matter. Build relationships. I'm talking about relationships on this channel all the time. Those three people you have to have relationships with so you can go get your money right now. But I hopefully will be paid from this job and I'll let you guys know. So stick with us. I gotta quit making sound.